Hi guys and welcome to Titan Review. This video is a little bit of an in-house one talking about how I'm actually ingesting footage uh, to be able to be edited, especially since I've just upgraded to a Panasonic GH5, which is what I'm currently recording on and we'll be doing a full review of shortly, don't worry. Um, this is kind of a, a bit of a, an interesting one if you are interested in being a you know YouTuber kind of thing, or if you are already a YouTuber and are interested in seeing how other people do it. So hopefully this is at least in some way interesting to at least some of you. So to give you some context, I've had a Canon 100D for about four years now and I've been saving pretty much all of the footage that I can do from that camera. I'm not saving the final rendered files as I can download those from YouTube or re-render them with the source files that I have, but I'm keeping all of the source files so that I can reuse them in future videos if necessary. That means that I have about three to four terabytes of footage on my eight terabyte hard drives at the moment and that is kind of limited, uh, limiting me in space. Now I'm using Handbrake to re code some of that old footage to drop the bitrate down and use H.265 to be able to sort of shrink that down. So I'm looking at being able to compress about four terabytes of data into a two or at uh, one to two, which is actually pretty awesome and um, fairly little quality loss. Now, of course, the GH5, which records at 4K 100 megabits per second on its lowest 4K setting, is kind of a, a bit crazy in terms of its bitrate there. So that's going to be a massive bottleneck for my storage capacity. So what I'm doing is actually taking the footage and straight up uh, re-encoding it as soon as I finish recording everything for a video. So that means that I'm taking the SD card out and putting it in the system that is actually upstairs in this filming room and then having it auto re-encode by footage to be, I think, 30 megabits per second rather than the full 100, which considering 30 megabits per second is what I normally render out to for YouTube, I'm not losing any quality there. Now the way I'm doing that is actually a Ryzen 1700 based PC. It does have a G GTX 980 Ti in there. There's also a second graphics card for some other bits and pieces and testing and stuff like that, but it is basically just a Ryzen 1700 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 980 Ti for all intents and purposes, sitting in my custom Cooler Master Master Case uh, Pro 5, which, you know, I still quite like it. I've also uh, just picked up a Kingston, I think it's a Data Traveler uh, or Mobile Lite G4, which is a micro and full-size SD card USB 3 reader. So the plan here is to set up Adobe Media Encoder, which obviously works very well with Premiere Pro, which is what I primarily edit with, uh, so that when I plug in the SD card to the reader, it will automatically start ingesting those files that are on the SD card and start rendering them out uh, to my NAS directly. That way I can then either copy them to my local editing drive, edit them and then put them back, or I can just edit straight off the NAS depending on what I fancy doing, but either way it dumps them into a footage dump folder uh, and actually works really well. It does take about 30 seconds or so from when I put the SD card in to uh, you know a media encoder actually noticing the files and starting to render them out but the quality difference as you'll see in a second is really pretty minimal uh, especially since as I said I export to uh, 30 megabit per second on YouTube anyway so for me I'm not really too fussed about that. Take a look at the file sizes specifically the one that is up over here you're looking at a 605 megabyte file that's the original one when you're looking at the rendered file which is the one over here you're looking at at 191 megabytes, so that's a good 3x saving in file size. When you look at the overall quality, I think it's a pretty decent, you know, comparison. I mean, let's have a look, just, uh, you know, full screen uh, for you. So this is actually the pre-rendered, so this is the, the post-render, this is the, the one that has been rendered, and I'm not seeing any visual artifacts or anything crazy like that, so that's decent, versus the original one, which uh, actually, I mean, ironically, just because of the focus there a little bit off, but um, I'm not seeing a massive difference here. Personally, also this is a 4K file being reviewed on a 1080p display, so I can't give exact details, but I'm fairly happy with this comparison, and especially just due to how uh, YouTube basically works for compression. I think this is going to be certainly decent enough for uh, for the YouTube copy, and it's going to save me uh, a good you know 3x in space, at least from this comparison anyway. For me, this is a really awesome set up. I can take the SD card out and shove it into the SD card reader that is currently about three feet away from the camera and have it auto encode my footage into more uh, footage that is more easy to play back for and render out for my system. It's obviously going to be at a fairly similar bit rate to what I'm uh, you know, exporting to so that's not really a problem. The quality loss is very minimal so I'm happy with that and overall it just seems like a, a really nice easy solution and it's saving me a considerable amount of space. So with that said if you are a user 
YouTube creator, I'd love to hear how you store your files, store your footage and all that sort of stuff in the comments down below. Do you store the, the full raw footage and you're just buying as many hard drives as you can or do you not bother to store anything or just store the final product? I'd love to hear what you think on that one. Otherwise that's pretty much it, I'll leave some other videos but you're, you probably know by now that there's plenty over here and the subscribe button and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, also if you do want to support me and making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis then it'd be awesome if you could use the Amazon and Overclock as you can affiliate links in the description down below. There's also some other stuff down there that you can check out to support the channel. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And otherwise, we'll see you all in the next one.